Hey everybody, I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is Lydia Jett, a managing partner at SoftBank. Lydia, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having me today. Of course, right now we are at Iconoclast, really the meeting of the minds, the top investors in the world, really in one space. And I'm really curious, what's on your radar? It has been just so incredible to see this conference take shape and the quality of people you brought in both last fall and today. I just feel so honored to be sitting here listening to people from such a wide range of asset classes talking about their worlds. And in your world specifically, what is, what's keeping you up? What do you have your eye on? Now we are seeing so much ground up innovation in terms of technology and the diffusion of that technology throughout all of our portfolio companies. And so that gives me so much optimism and excitement about the evidence we're going to see of, of real um, ingestion and utilization in a beneficial way. It's going to take some time. We're spending a lot of time thinking about how do we actually productize this so we can throw it out there in the universe faster. But we're, we're working hard towards trying to figure out how do we drop technology into a world and stir and see what happens. Can you dive a little deeper there? When you're thinking about that, how do you do that? Yeah, so right, well, well, let me take a step back. We have probably 400 portfolio companies in the SoftBank family. We're really unique relative to most technology investors. These are late stage, large scale, um, you know, thousands of employees, some of these companies. The ability to actually apply technology across a big organization, the ability to use AI technology, specifically generative AI technology, and try and figure out ways to reduce manual processes, trying to figure out ways to speed up business processes, get product to market faster, get actual feedback from customers faster. We're watching that in our biggest companies and we're trying to take those lessons and figure out how to share it across the broader SoftBank portfolio. I think for technology companies broadly today, they take a step back and they say, we don't really know what to do with it. We're so excited, but we don't know what to do. And that's our job to figure out how do we actually take tactical use cases in a way that other companies can try and apply. You mentioned AI. AI has been a theme in undercurrent of this summit so far. And before November 30th, I mean, just in the general world, you really weren't, you were not hearing much about AI. Then ChatGBT came along and you know, the rest is history. So when you think about AI now, a few months after that launch, are you excited about it? Are you fearful about it? What's your sentiment? I am. We have been talking about AI at SoftBank for a long time. I, I remember back early earnings presentations from Maso where the whole Twitter universe uh, made fun of, of us constantly talking about AI. I'm talking five, six, seven years ago. Um, and we, quite frankly, struggled as an investment team to figure out where was real AI across the technology universe. It was a lens at which we looked at everything and we had a hard time identifying it. Um, it is so much fun to see the language just explode because what that means is so much talent's coming in, so much capital is being poured in, and you're really seeing acceleration of AI learning cycles. And that's why we went from November to January to March to today. You wouldn't believe how fast this learning cycle has gotten. And so we are really excited about that because the application is so significant. So, you know, it's something we've been thinking about for a long time. We think this is going to impact every company we work with. Um, we think the acceleration of, of learning cycles and the acceleration of new technology deployments is going to be just extraordinary to watch and we're excited to figure out how to use it. So I'm curious and I want to know for my viewers, how should they invest in AI? I think it is really hard as a public market investor to get exposure to AI today. You have a universe of three or four companies you could possibly back, but you're getting a very distributed basket of assets when you do that. When you go back um, and, a Microsoft, a Facebook, a Google, it's, you're not getting direct access to AI. Um, you know, SoftBank, we are thinking every day, it is the core investment thesis of our fund. How do we invest behind AI companies? Again, it's a small part of SoftBank, and so I think it is very hard to be a pure AI investor in the public markets. Um, you know, we are working very hard to build up portfolios of what we think are best in class, relatively scaled assets in AI. We're thinking about how do we distribute across the broader ecosystem. Um, it is early. I think it's really hard to get exposure as public. There are a handful of assets, SoftBank included, that we're really excited about how, we, how we're going to start using it at scale. You're saying it's early, but you've been on the forefront. You've said, I've had my eye on AI for five years, seven years. When you and I are sitting here next year at Next Iconoclast, how do you think the world will look with AI? I think it's going to be slower than people expect. You know, as we 
spend time across this portfolio and we think about what it actually takes for a company to use these large language models, the LLMs, what it takes for them to actually generate any type of value from, from, these, from generative AI broadly, um, companies have to figure out how to, how to structure their data, how to use it, what are the specific use cases. It's just going to take a lot of testing. And I think for public companies in particular, given that they're so quarterly driven with their earning models, it's actually quite hard to make those forward investments into AI applications that, that have immediate uh, payback. And so, you know, in our portfolio, we actually expect the application of AI to take place earlier, given when we're not focused on quarterly earnings, then we'll see it in the public markets. But I think it will take a while before you actually see broader ramifications. So, you know, in a year, I hope that we come back here and we say, here are some really interesting applications we found that have dramatically changed either the conversion rates of company or the cost structures of companies. We're going to come back and start having those conversations in a way that we're just not ready today. Um, I think it's going to be several years before you see real large application in the public markets. And how would you suggest people get ready for those conversations? Because we're not ready yet, but how do we get ready for them soon? The most fun part about any investor's job is we just get to learn. And so I would suggest that they, that your readers, your listeners do exactly what we're doing every day and just keep reading. I've never seen an acceleration of technology as fast as I'm seeing here. There's so much great content. There's so much great thought leadership. Um, and it's fun to read about. And so I would suggest people do what we do all day is just keep learning. I do want to take a step back here and look at the past year that we've had. It was really turbulent. We saw in headlines looming recession. We've had a softer landing than what we thought we were going to have. But A, how are you navigating this time particularly? And B, we're halfway through 2023 now. Are you excited for the rest of the year? What's your general outlook there? I've been sitting in an investing seat for 20 years, and yet we always do the same thing. These moments of great uncertainty happen, and the whole system seizes. And I look back at 2022, and we really did all seize in unison. Um, there was so much uncertainty about rate hikes. There was so much uncertainty about what that would mean for real estate. So much uncertainty about commercial real estate. The uncertainty was, was almost just the cataclysmic event that kept us all back in our seat. Um, well, we don't know with certainty what's going to happen with rate hikes coming forward. We do have a much higher degree of certainty than we had then. And I think that's allowing us to get more active in our seats and ready to think about how do we go out and, and activate. You know, I think at this point, the biggest thing that's holding us back is just the asymmetry of, of, multi, of valuations. So I think, you know, we're coming off a, a very big period of hype in terms of public market and private market multiples. Um, we're starting to see a normalization of that. We'll, we'll continue working through it. I think as our team looks at the back half of this year, first quarter of next year, we're really excited about the opportunities that we think are going to come to market and how our expectations will meet reality. Lydia Jett, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me.